Commentating on Judges 9, Warren Wearsby shares an interesting story about a time in our country. When George Washington's army defeated the British at Yorktown, the end of the Revolutionary War began. But winning the war didn't automatically end all the problems that the colonies faced as a brand new nation. You see, things became so bad economically that even one of George Washington's colonels wrote Washington a secret letter urging him to use his army to make himself king or even dictator. But Washington rightly rejected the plan. And as Wearsby notes that with Washington's popularity and power, he probably could have become king if he wanted. Now Abimelech, one of Gideon's 70 sons, the main character of our chapter this morning, was just the opposite. The chapter records for us the destruction that Abimelech brought in his ruthless rise to power by murdering most of his brothers to become the king of Shechem. There's a strong denouncement recorded for us in this chapter of his life and his leadership. And we read about the difficulties brought upon his life after he was only the king of Shechem for three years. Now, as you read it today, it almost reads like a gruesome scene from a film like Braveheart, especially the way Abimelech's life ends by a woman dropping a millstone upon his head and him begging his armor bearer to finish him off so he doesn't go down in history as the king who was killed by the hands of a woman. See, Abimelech is the negative example of how a leader is to influence others. Obviously, the lesson is clear. Don't follow any part of his negative example. But also, as we close our time together this morning, in contrast, I, I want you to be encouraged how that's not how Jesus, the King of Kings, how he rules and reigns. And our attitudes today should reflect the leadership of our King. Look at how Paul describes King Jesus for us in Philippians 2. He says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges, took the humble position of a slave, and was born as a human being. And when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God highly elevated him to a place of honor and gave him the name above all other names, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father.